Hi, Ken Lassison here again. A reader asked me to show how we look at bacteria shifts and a variety of conditions. This particular reader asked about irritable bowel syndrome. We actually have two ways of getting information about it. One is the standard scientific method. The other way is citizen science, which is powered by users of the site uploading the microbiome and providing their symptoms. So let's go and look at the first way, which is the classic scientific method. So if you go into the site and log on, you have your samples. And if you go over and click condition templates here, it will go and list all of the conditions which I have extracted the bacteria profiles from articles. So we go down the list and we're going to go and hit irritable bowel syndrome. And I just click there and it takes us over to do a report. As you can see, it's not just one or two bacteria. It is a very long list of bacteria and should explain a couple of things. For example, here is we have a particular genus, and you will notice it occurs four times. And why does it occur four times? It's very simple. Different studies produce different results. So if I want to know about a particular study, I just simply go and click open. And a new page giving exactly where the information came from. There's a chance I may have misinterpreted or mistranscribed because everything is done by reading the article, extracting information manually. So there's always a risk of error. If you find an error, please contact me so I can review it and correct the information. In general, I figure about 95% accuracy, but I'm human. Okay, so here's one um, which basically looks at differences this was a non-report, but they did report there were some differences. Number one is found much greater differences, a newer report. This is 2017. This one is 2015. And the third one is 2016, and it finds similarities between IBS and depression. Remember that because when we go to the citizen scientist aspect of it, it actually comes into play. So let's go back and what we have is we have all of this all the way up and down. What we should be aware of is that occasionally you think such as high or low, in which case a study reported that basically some people had high and some people had low compared to controls. It's not totally unexpected. And we will even hit that in for particular reports, one says high and one says low which is correct there's no easy way at this point of time to tell if we get to the point where we have four studies or more and one is outlier we could start excluding them but with only a small number of studies we cannot exclude one as being inaccurate for example here we have two highs and one low still not enough consensus on one value to be willing to risk the exclusion okay so that is the classic scientific method of doing things. Straightforward, goes to articles, extract the information from the articles, enter it into the database, and then proceeds. What you will have up top is your count, percentage below 50 and 25% and above. Now, I should explain a couple of things. One is if you see zero, it means nothing was reported. Now, you are not necessarily expected to have every bacteria in your gut. You're not expected to have exact match to it. Some people have it, some people don't. More importantly, studies usually report on the average. So the average um, bacillus was low. Doesn't mean every person in a study who had IBS was low. It means that on average, it was low. In this case, I have none, and what we have for reference is 33. So if you have below 33, you probably are a match. Now, if you go down to higher numbers like here, it's high, and we go up here, and I'm not over 75 percentile, 
but I'm getting close to it. So I'm moderately high, but not high. What a study decides is high or low can be very subjective and also very sensitive to the selection of candidates for the study. So it becomes fuzzy and my best solution is to give you your numbers, give you the values and let you come to your own conclusion whether or not it is significant or not. Okay, so that's basically it. That's the standard scientific method. Now we go over to citizen science. Over on citizen science aspect, which is the microbiome explorer, if we go in there and we click official diagnosis of irritable bowel syndrome, you get a table presented. Like lots of bacteria, and one of which is highlighted in, in yellow. And the reason it's highlighted is that it is, is a pretty solid, clear association. Now, we actually have a fair number of things which are like the association, but the probability is not that tight. Um, we have here, we have 296 bacteria 300, and we're looking for 5% significant, where 5% of 300 is 15. So we would expect 15 items to be there and perhaps one or two significant. We have more than 15, which means that there's other things coming into play, but the other things are not that strong at this level to do it. So we find one particular um, species of bacteria. And if you look at it, we see that it is low, expected is 11 for each one of these four areas. And we have 24 here, we have eight, we have five, we have nine. Now, this is done using a non paramatic statistical method, which is pretty nice for, for teasing data out of messy data. So the result is, it says, hey, wait a minute, there's a shift towards low values, which is unexpected. It may only be occurring for a subset of the people, not all of the people, but that subset is strong enough and dominating enough that it shows up as this big 24 showing up here. Okay, so that's a nice thing. And all of these are with the official diagnosis of IBS. Now let's go ahead and toss in something else. Oops, let's toss in people who say they have IBS. No official diagnosis, just they have from um, Google in deduced that they have IBS. Let's go down and see what happens with them. And we have a long list, but nothing stands out. So um, it means that our accuracy of identifying population has gone down with that. But now let's go on to one more. And here is where we combine people who have official diagnosis and who deem themselves to have IBS. This could be data entry issues or whatever. But what we end up doing is having a lot of interesting matches. For example, we have here for a whole class, we expect 12 and what we see is 21 18. So we find that in this class, we have a much higher number. And down here for the order, which is underneath a class, same thing. We go down further to the film, it's there. Firmicules goes low. So we have a shift in it, which I believe I've seen stated in some studies. And then we have, oh yes, yeah, so an old friend from the first study is still showing up there. And now we have a super film, which goes high. So it ends up being, a better filtering to get significance out of it. So the other aspect of it is apple to apple, oranges to oranges problem. All of the control studies were done using different methodology, different everything. Here, but the method of getting the data is identical. It's all using U-Biome data. So the data is far more comparable than in the classic scientific studies, which is a sweet thing. Um, so we have those two things and we have a whole bunch of shifts which are statistically significant. Let's go over and add in something more. Depression, remember, we had in one of the official studies, the similarity be between depression. If we go in to depression, we see here we have a association 
of low as before, except a much more severe low than the other ones. The other ones, we had much more up there than here. Here it really sticks out. And we have an increase of uniformis to being high. So again, from people contributing their U biome and the symptoms, we are able to, to get some very clear information about what's going on. Now let's go on to one more. And this one is, is looking at teeth grinding, jaw clenching with everything else. And guess what? We find the jackpot. We find a whole bunch of things. So if you take a look at IBS people and look into a subclass of people who have jaw clenching or teeth grinding, you end up getting a whole bunch of different bacteria all showing marked shifts so that it is much clearer that this is a bacterial pattern and we can do something about it. So at this point of time, let's go over and hop back to your microbiome samples. So I'm back at the samples page and I'm going to hit advanced suggestions. And there's two ways we can take what we've just seen and apply to suggestions. We can do both ways, which is sweet. So you don't have to go either or. You get to make the choice. Or you can try both choices and see what the differences are and come to your own conclusion. And as always, in consultation with the most elusive of all creatures, a knowledgeable medical professional. Okay, so we click Advanced Suggestions. Now we have a variety of choices here. So what I'm going to do is first look at the bacteria selection choices. And what we have is we have things filtered by symptoms. So these are things which are matched where the bacterial patterns I have match some of the patterns identified statistically significant for the citizen scientist aspect. So in other words, here is 48 bacteria, which are all matches. In other words, I have a whole bunch of symptoms which matches bacteria pattern. Down below that, we have doing the outliers, which is just identifying very high or very low. Outliers is high or low regardless. Symptom matches is, hey, guess what? The pattern says you have too high in this bacteria and too low in this bacteria, that combination. And you have that, and you have that symptom that's associated with it. So the result is, is is much finer, much more targeted, and we have 48 bacteria there. So that gives us the basic information about that. Now let's go back and take a look at how we create suggestions. Okay, so you can go and do by symptoms, in which case you're using the citizen science aspect of this, this application. If you have a pattern matching IBS, then it will take that into account. Now, you also have the ability to go and apply something else. You could go and apply all the things which we see from the official scientists report. In other words, if your bacteria is high or low according to the outliers and the official studies has it being reported high or low, then we will grab those bacteria. Remember, we have hundreds of bacteria where you have something odd with them. Some of them may mean absolutely nothing. What we are trying to do is identify from this list which ones are likely most significant. Most significant are the ones which we know have an association with symptoms. So we have four to eight of those. We have also, which are outliers, which means just out of the normal, we have 68 of those. And if you go back and go down to the bottom where we have high or low based on average and standard deviations, we have 181. The bottom way is often how sites like Ubiome, I suspect Thrive, decides what is high or low. You are hitting a lot more bacteria, you're far less targeted, you're far less specific to the symptoms. So we are back here and now we 
can do that. We can go down and make our selection. I'm going to just go and uh, reduce the selection to a few items. Um, okay, and hit that. And now we go and we click that. And I'm going to jack this up to Toronto just for the fun of it. And we now get our list of samples. So what we have is the list of things which you should increase or take. So we have some prebiotics and probiotics listed as things you should be taking. Um, beta glucan, which is often barley, which means um, barley porridge for breakfast, chicory, etc. Items to decrease is certain types of sugars. Oh, I forgot to exclude antibiotics. And that's it. And now down below we have oh draw. We have all of the probiotics which will have an absolutely positive effect, keyword, in theory, on your IBS. Now, if you go further down, you get mixed in back where some of the things are, one second, where some of the things are good and some things are bad. Like for example, just combination 2.7 is a net, Three is positive, point three is negative. So it helps some of the bacteria correct themselves, but doesn't help others of the bacteria. Hence, we have a disagreement there. So we have there, but in general, we have a very num large number of positive ones there. And now for negative impact, we are unusually empty of them. Often there'll be a whole list there. In this case, we have nothing. And then down below, we have a whole list of things where, excuse me, I have no idea if these are going to help or hurt. These means that the bacteria shifts you have, and these probiotics have no known association, so they are neutral. You could try them, see what happens, whatever. They are neutral, so we have no idea of a prediction of their impact. Okay, so that's basically it. So you have on your suggestion page the ability to filter by symptoms. So if you have IBS as a symptom and you have bacteria matching IBS, then voila, away you go. Keyword, if you think you have IBS, you pick that and you don't have the bacteria shift seeing for IBS, you may have nothing. And then I added in the extra filtering. So one is citizen science, one is standard scientific method. So that's basically it. Um, and check that, and away you can go. And you can gain select a combination of stuff you want. So I hope this, uh, this explains to you much better how you can go in and understand that we have two sets of approaches to correcting the microbiome for a particular condition. We have scientific studies, and we have citizen science, which again, is all thanks to people uploading their new biome results and adding their symptoms in. Adding the symptoms is the only way we discover this citizen sciences relationship. So please remember to do so. The more information we share and get up there, the more it will benefit everybody. So thanks very much. So long for now and talk to you again.